Hello, I'm Craig Constantine. Hi, I'm Brian Howard. Hi, Brian. Thanks for jumping in. Um, sometimes I have to hound people, uh, but you're one of what I say, one of my favorite guests. You're the kind of person who, when I say, "Hey, would you?" you're like, "Absolutely, I'm on that." Um, so it's just fun to be continuously exposed to people who are over the top, passionate, you know, good way about what can I do to, you know, bring my message to the world. So thanks for taking the time to talk with me today. Craig, we've I, known or met each other 25 yes, months ago when I started yes. podcasting with Seth Godin's Akimbo group. And I've been a fan of yours since day one. Oh, thank you. You're too nice. Thank you. We, so I took, um, I always pause cause it's, it's not the name changed. It's now called the podcasting fellowship. It used to be, used to be called the podcasting fellowship. Now it's called podcasting workshop that they, they changed the name. Oh, so you right? and I were in, yeah, they don't call it TPF anymore. Oh, now it's yeah. POD. So they're like in pod nine. Um, oh. so you and I were in TPF three and yeah. I, I went in the, well, the people need the story, but I went in, I already had a podcast and I was like, wait, you can take courses. <laughs> so like I ran in and there were like hundreds of people, yourself included. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, this is great. And I got a chance to like rip my show apart and redo all kinds of things and had so much fun, um, that I've been back for everyone since as a remarkable to help out. But anyway, I digress cool. in these little pre-calls, the guests, um, don't hear like, the people listening have heard me say this a million times. We do a little conversation beforehand and I basically say podcasting and then we see what comes out. And you actually had um, the experience of basically suggesting to your son, I think you should take this course. And you you signed him up for TPF2 and he like kind of went meh and, and didn't do anything with it. And then you came back for TPF3. And I, I when I said podcasting, you immediately mentioned Akimbo, which is the parent company that runs the course. You mentioned Akimbo, and you started to tell me about. Uh, I'm going to say I think you actually used the word the magic of the community, and I'm sitting here blabbering on about how much I love finding passionate people to share, which is also me talking about community. So, do you remember, like, not you know, it's two years, right? But do you remember? When you were looking at the podcast fellowship course, did you realize that it was going to be a community of people or were you just seeing this looks like a good place to learn how? I was, I'm, I'm yeah, when I was just, no, I knew nothing about the community and it was actually, um, and it was just a good place to learn the skill of like, what is podcasting and like, how does one do this? Uh, so that's when I, I encouraged my son to start a podcast and, um, because I thought it was exciting and cool. And, um, and then I signed him up for it. And again, he did nothing with it. And then I thought, okay, I'm going to get that skill. And I signed up. Hmm. Did you, so I'm trying not to put words in your mouth because I've, I've seen a lot of people take the particular course. And I, I noticed that there's like a vacuum that's created. So you show up and well, first when you show up, there's nothing to do. And you're like, you know, you're milling around in the hallway and then the first lesson comes out and you're like, okay, I read it. And, and, but now what? Like, wh I feel like I should push a button or pull a lever. Or there's something I should do. And then it, it kind of just sits there. And then you're like, well, I guess I just push this button and type in the, and it like sucks you in. Like when you start doing the thing, which you basically start on day one, mm -hmm. it like pulls you in and I'm wondering is, did you realize that you needed to be pulled forward or did you have like energy and you didn't know which direction to go with it? Um, yeah, I would say that I had like a thought or a wish or a hope to do something with it. And then, and I was sort of paying attention from day one and like committing to, you know, maybe do the exercises and then it was, I think, was it a, was it a five week course? I just forget. Um, yeah, it it's two uh, months? seven week, uh, five lessons a weekday for seven weeks. It's 35 yeah. lessons. So I was sort of mostly doing everything. And then, um, but by the end of the, the, the course, I hadn't quite launched a show. And, um, and, uh, but then I kind of got invited by, but I really kept in contact with like the magic people. And I think of mm -hmm. all of them and smile and the moment I think of those people and you being one of them um, that, you know, offered me feedback along the way. And, uh, and then I got carried on and I was at that real tipping point of, am I doing this or am I not? And mm -hmm. it was the people um, that, uh, that I, I kept doing it. 
Did you find, um, say, you know, Dunbar's number, like 120 or 100 some, you know, my monkey brain can only hold 100 monkey brain, you know, connections. Um, how big would you say, you don't have to name names, but you can, how big would you say was the core group of people that you really felt like, okay, if those people hadn't been there, if I'd been missing one of those or two of those, I wouldn't have made it. And what I'm wondering is if somebody is listening and they don't have, you know, like this isn't an ad for Akimbo, there's no, I don't get any kickbacks, but if they don't have a cohort, they don't have their social group, like how many people do you really feel like you needed to have enough, like, all right, there's energy, there's synergy happening here. Do you have an idea? Yeah, I do. Absolutely. It was probably like, for me, it was like four people. Um, but then the the other maybe seven people or maybe just um, the other four people like was, was yeah, pretty key plus. as well. Uh, yeah, like the four, like there was David and uh, Maria and mm-hmm. Diane. Um, and those are the three keys for me that like, I just really paid attention to everything they did. And then there was a, a lesser extent at the time, you and Suzanne Mueller. And, uh, you know, I think a few other people that like were really, um, you know, I was watching and thinking, uh, yeah, let's push them along and they pushed me and yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really neat to see. Um, on one hand, you know, the coaches and the remarkables who were helping them were trying on one hand, we're like, yeah, I know what the answer is. Like, I want to tell you, just, just do this, but to, to create the space for the students and for, you know, it's not even really students. It's everybody who's just there in the room, create the space for them to discover things on their own. Do you think that there, um, was there something that, that surprised you in the experience of taking the course that was, I'm going to say like, you know, this surprised me. And if I hadn't seen that, it might've been, you know, that might've been the tipping point. Like having seen that was enough to really make me believe I could do this. Mm, Yeah. I don't know if I, I, I know. I like, for me, it wasn't a surprise. It was, um, like, you know, I knew the work had to be done, but I guess what was surprising is the, the warmth that I felt for the group and like the process, uh, I guess there was a surprise in that. Like, I know that it's a skill that, you know, that, well, I can learn if I have the discipline, I can do it. And, um, and I guess I, you know, was, was think the surprise came out a little bit that well, I, I can do this as a hobby and it doesn't have to be money making thing. And, um, and I have this community. Yeah, there was surprises that, you know, it's just, it's a hobby and like the, the, uh, the, 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 you know, doing it for fun out of curiousness and interest and, um, and then the support of, uh, the group, I guess it was surprising that it was really the support of the group is why I continue to podcast today. Hmm. Yeah. So what, uh, tell me the name of your show. I have two shows now. <laughs> Even even better. Tell me both of their names. So the show that I uh, like being, I guess, type A type personality. I'm a real estate agent. Um, <laughs> you know, I have to, I have to like be in type A. I have to um, sort of monetize. I can't do anything that's not worth uh, like something. Or I, I suppose we're all a bit like that. But my real estate show. I live in Calgary, Alberta, and uh, my real estate show is called Calgary Living Real Estate and Lifestyle. And so why real estate and lifestyle? Well, I mean, well, I guess, you know, it's an interest of mine, lifestyle, actually, of course. And, uh, and this city is a great place. And, um, but I, you know, I could have podcasted on, I don't know, maybe just, you know, the mountains or a particular mm-hmm. mountain or a national park or something. But I, and that was the first show to think that maybe I will get business from it. And I have, so that's good news. Um, but the second show is I very much um, about, um, about uh, capitalizing on my, uh, on, on, you know, my career, I guess. Um, but it's, it's, um, and it's, you know, really directed f- to capitalize on my career, but it's really a, a sense of curiousness and interest in people. The second show is called why I joined EXP Realty. Hmm. Yeah. Do you remember if this has happened? It probably has. Do you remember the first time somebody walked up to you and went, Oh, you're the guy from the podcast with the, or like they recognize the sound of your voice? 
Do you remember the first time you get yeah. surprised by a listener? You know, that hasn't happened a lot, <laughs> to be honest. But what has happened a lot is, oh, I like your show, you know, or mm. uh, like, uh, and, with, and I'm still surprised. Like, you listen? <laughs> you know, I shouldn't say that. But um, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, yeah, I do remember those kind of uh, interactions. For sure, it breaks the. Uh, and I still, breaks, I still do, and I, like I, I'm like warm every, every time. Every time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it breaks my imposter bubble every time somebody walks up to me, and and like it doesn't happen every day, but I tend to travel, and I'll be at a large like a parkour event or something, and somebody will walk up to me and say, "Hey, I really enjoyed episode blah blah,", blah and I'm like, "Wow, okay." I mean, because in my mind, I'm doing the math. I'm going, if one person says that was really cool, how many okay. people are out there who you know, like? There's got to be at least ten for every one that sends me a dm or something yeah uh, so i always i always think it's really great first of all to get feedback um but i also try to encourage people to like if you get one bit of good feedback there's a whole lot that you haven't heard from like uh, one of my shows has something like forty thousand downloads I, it's it's hard to even count anymore long story awesome. and i think i have seven apple reviews you know like it, it's incredible. just like, but it's like my brain goes seven. Really? There's only seven. And then I'm like, wait, 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 wait. How many, like, all right, that's somebody who really, like that person really loved it. So how many people are there who go, well, that's really cool. Thanks. Or, or what I'm really hoping is that they get distracted midway. Like they encounter an idea that's so fun or so exciting that they like slap their headphones off and run out and go, you know, try whatever, or talk to somebody else. Yeah. That I think is the, the power of of like being able to spread ideas. Um, what are your yeah. podcasts called right now? Um, I keep joking. We need a podcasters anonymous, but I don't mean to like diminish the, you know, complexity of addiction, but hi, I'm Craig. I have a podcast. I have three of them at the moment. I have um, the main one, which is called movers mindset, which oh, know, everybody yeah. listening will be like, Oh God, shut up about movers mindset. And in that one, I talk with movement enthusiasts to find out who they are, what they do and why they do it. Um, I have one scheduled for tomorrow. I try to record in person. We're up to 103 out 104 is being edited. Um, and that one is super fun. I've been like, various countries um, recording. And that one I'm starting to do short form now where I'm trying to record over the internet. I don't like recording. Like it's a different kind of thing. So I'm kind of getting used to like, Oh, I want to like, I want to like hit stop and go get a cup of coffee, Brian, you know, like, I, and you can't do that with the virtual ones. Yeah. Um, so movers mindset is this big giant juggernaut. Um, we've been transcribing all the stuff for over a million words of transcripts that are on the website. It's huge. Wow. And then the next project that got out of hand was called little box of quotes. I, I, I'm a nut about collecting quotes. I have like seven, 800 quotes that I collect and it's ongoing and it's a daily show and it's 30, like 30 seconds, a minute of just me going, hello, Craig here today for my little box of quotes. And then I just read one of my quotes and I hit stop. <laughs> It's, really? uh, there's like, it's like 600 of those out. Um, and then this show that we're doing now, this is turning into the Craig monologue, the podcaster community, this companion podcast is me literally just trying to rope other people who are passionate about podcasting into talking to me about podcasting. That's, that's all I'm doing is I just, you know, I want to talk to people. Um, and I love like Calgary is not that far. I could get to Calgary, but sometimes I'm talking to people. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to go to New Zealand just to have a 10 minute conversation with someone. So I love that, you know, we can just pull this together and hit record and yeah. um, work magic in 20 minutes, I think. So those are my three current ones. So with, well, I want to, I hope it's okay. I, <laughs> no, I, flip it around. I have, yeah, um, I have a show I'm interviewing the mayoral candidates for Calgary. We're having mm -hmm. an election here on October 18th. And so for the you know, year, so 18 months or something since COVID started, everything's been by Zoom. Prior to that, I was mm. doing in-person. But I have a mayor candidate who wants to do an in-person meeting with me on Tuesday. I'm scared. I forget how. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not scared no. of the interaction, but like I, the Zoom made it so easy for me. Yeah. So um, that, um, you know, I have that mic for, and I remember talking to you, you know, which one would I get? And, um, and I, mean, I haven't the, used the it. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, the first thing I would say is remember to wear pants. That's always the first rule. The second rule is take your gear out and uh, find somebody, uh, either your son or, or whatever, just, you know, grab a random person who is gullible yeah. and say, we're going to go pretend we're doing this thing. And, you know, just go out and do it and just try one and see what you get. Um, and you'll be like, oh crap, I forgot batteries or, you know, or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Iron the kinks out of it. Um, and then the third thing is, you know, fake it. Like, you know, when, when things go wrong, you're like, Oh, that happens sometimes. Here's how we, you know, just, just like act like, you know what you're doing. Cause you do know what you're doing. So, sure. um, 
Yeah, I think that's. Uh, I mean, in terms of the, the the actual logistics of of COVID and stuff, like I have this. I use these mics, not this specific one, but I use these mics in person, and I have clean, like fresh pop filters. You know, so like I I open a Ziploc bag and the guest like you know picks their filter out because like you got to sit within a couple inches of thing right. for an hour. So I, I give them like a clean pop filter. Um, it's because I've done several recordings during the pandemic where I've yeah. gone into like Philadelphia, which was a COVID hotspot. Yeah. And we recorded with masks in addition to clean filters and we we're outside in a public park. Um, so I think it's, it's just a matter of like, well, why, you know, why do you want to record in person? And as long as you have a clear answer to that, then the rest of it becomes just simple challenges. Like, okay, we did this. I was surprised. I've had people record with masks on and it actually works pretty well. It turns out it's like the best pop filter in the world. If you put the mask on their face, like really, when wow. I put my hand in front of the mic, the volume goes down, yeah. but it doesn't sound terribly different. Right. So as long no. as I don't, as long as I don't mess up my lip movement, you know, we're going to roll a joint, but just how I literally have my hand in between me and the mic and the, the mask would let far more sound through. And when I take my hand away, yes, it's like, Oh yeah. When I pull my hand away, you hear the difference, but it really doesn't wreck everything to have a piece of cloth in front of the microphone. Um, wow, that's really so cool. It's just little things like go try that with your son. Like here, put this mask on. And then, you know, you can say to the guest, like, you know, are you okay? And, and you know, you can be six, eight feet apart. You don't have to sit directly in front of each other and try and spit on each other. You can, mm. you can actually sit side by side or on an angle, like whatever you have to do to be comfortable. Um, I think it's way more important that people approach, you know, challenges and risks rationally. And if you're like, okay, we currently have like an outbreak here and we're going to, all right, um, let's not do the recording this week. Let's all get our COVID test. That's yeah. the other thing. Like, you know, make sure you're, I would say, you know, make sure you have a recent COVID test and you're like, I don't have it. You don't have it. We're good to take our masks off for 20 minutes while we do this interview. Um, mm -hmm. Because the magic of sound, um, I talk about this all the time, but the magic of the sound comes through. Um, there, There's no virtual recording that is as good as a live recording because the timing, you know, that the, um, the timing is zero. Like you're, you know, you laugh and the thing and it's like right together and you're sharing the same space, the sunshine, the shade, the, the sounds, the planes, like all that ambiance is make helps co-create a shared experience. And you don't get that through zoom. That's awesome. Um, I'm, I appreciate that's my diatribe. That. <laughs> and where should I do it? Should I, do you ever do them outside? You're oh, it's, that's a, that's a great question, Brian. Um, so uh, you can do them outside. I've done them uh, in people's houses outside. Uh, I've done them in, I did one in a noisy YMCA like main meeting hall and it was loud. Um, and the, yeah, the, so you can do them anywhere. The thing to just keep in mind is like, if you're outside, so they call field recordings, you know, shit's going to happen. And when it does, you just kind of go, and we're back. So I was saying, you know, like you just like let it happen, yeah. but you have to, you have to tell the guest, you have to tell the guest up front, Hey, some kid's going to come by and pick his nose or like some loud car is going to drag race. We're just going to ignore that. We're just going to pause and yeah. let that happen. And they're going to go back to work. And in editing, you just like snip, like, you know, 30 seconds, cut it right out. Yeah. And so that, you know, crap happens, but most of the time crap doesn't happen. Right. And you're going to have a whole bunch of good tape and a little bit you snip out. And that, that's my two cents. Good. You can also, you can hear it, you know, put your, you know, if you, if you get a chance, go early, but, um, you put your headphones on, turn your mic on. What do you hear? Oh, I didn't notice there was, you know, a, a highway right behind me or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's, it's always an experience. I love the challenge. If, if it's not obvious, I love the fun part. <laughs> Tell me about the headphones you have on right now. Uh, this is, turns into the Craig, it turns into the Brian interviews Craig show. Um, I pulled my headphones off my ear and got a, a like, oh wow, this is a hot room. Uh, this is a set of AKG. I don't remember. I've had these for 20 years. K271. Great pair of broadcast, um, semi-closed. So mostly isolating. I only hear what's in the headphones. Oh. Um, really nice set of headphones I've had forever. These new ear replaceable ear muffs and the cord is detachable. I love them. Uh, if you're listening, um, there is a K270 instead of a 271, which is almost identical. And I saw them on Amazon for like 70 US dollars a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Comes in a case and everything. And they're really good. The difference is they're what's called open back, meaning you can hear right through them. 
Um, so those, I, I like these, I look like a dork, like when I'm in a park, you know, what's the guy with the headphones, but it cuts this, the real world out. Mm. And then if I hear it, I know the mic is hearing it. Like, you know, the, the screaming baby off to the side that you would hear because right. human ears are awesome. The mic might not hear that. So I really like a good set of closed headphones so that I only hear, you know, like this is actually a pretty quiet recording. I'm not hearing anything from your side and it's pretty quiet over here. Neat. So it's my 271s. I love them. Anyway, Should I get a um, pair um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't gear, I wouldn't gear out, you know, like if you, if you got, if your system, if you like it and you're comfortable, go with that, yeah. especially cause you're going to go do some that, that matter, um, for political purposes. Like you want to, you want to nail those. You don't want to like, I would say drop it. You don't want to drop that on the floor because it's a rare chance to capture something important. And the mm -hmm. worst is if you're trying to do five candidates and you drop one of them, you're like, Oh, what do I do now? And like, you have to do it over. So right. I would stick with the gear that you got, but I okay. would just go out and do a, do a test run. Yeah, I will. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for interviewing me and having me on your show, Brian. <laughs> hey, I'm great. <laughs> no, no, this has been so, fun. Yeah, I think this is a great place to stop. I try and stop at 20 minutes. So I will just say it was a pleasure. Thanks for taking the time, Brian. Craig, peace out. Thank you very much. It's really great to see you. Nice to connect again.